Howdy folks, good to have you guys back to this view portion of our tutorial. In the last tutorial, we set up an application to run in a Docker container routed to by another traffic Docker container. We also made sure the view container could make requests to our API running inside of a different container service. Today, we're going to install some of our critical dependencies for the application. We'll install Tailwind CSS, which is the hot CSS framework of the day. We'll also install Axios, which is an alternative to using the built-in Fetch API of JavaScript. And lastly, we're going to install Vue Router or the next version of Vue Router, which works with Vue 3. I've now opened the Tailwind CSS docs. If you haven't used Tailwind CSS before, I recommend you check out this core concept sections that you can see in the sidebar here. We won't be using any advanced Tailwind CSS features, but it is really easy to tweak or configure Tailwind in a way that modifies its classes to meet your desired style or theme preferences. If we go to this installation page, we conveniently have some setup instructions for working with a View 3 Vite app, which is great because that's what we're working with. These instructions start with some installation of Vite, but we can go ahead and start right here with instructions to install Tailwind, post CSS, which is a dependency or a requirement of Tailwind, and auto prefixer. An auto prefixer is used to add vendor prefixes, meaning certain styles or, or classes that are necessary dependent on the browser. I've opened up our project inside of a terminal and VS code. We want to install these inside of the account client directory. So I'll copy and paste and we'll install Tailwind CSS and Post CSS. And since we're going to have to build our Docker container anyway, I'm also going to install, these were dev dependencies here. I also want to install Axios and Vue Router as regular old dependencies. And this just again keeps us from building our Docker image twice. Lastly, let's use an NPX script called Tailwind CSS to create two important config files. These files are postcss.config and tailwind.config.js. And in this file, we can customize our Tailwind. There are some nice settings in the documents for how you can purge unnecessary CSS. We're just working on development, so we won't worry about that now. And you can extend and modify like the colors and how some of your styles work in the main theme in this option. Then we have a post CSS config file, which uses the Tailwind plugin and auto prefixer, which I previously mentioned. There's no need to add anything to this config for our simple application. To get access to the baseline components of Tailwind CSS, we're going to create an index.css file in our source directory. We're going to add a couple of Tailwind rules here, and using PostCSS, this brings in the baseline for Tailwind CSS. We also need to make sure that this index.css is imported in our main.js file. And so we can import, and that's just here, index.css. Now that we have our CSS ready to set up, let's spin up our Docker environment. We'll change up one directory. And then I'm going to run Docker Compose up, but I'm going to use the build flag to make sure that we get a clean build of our account client service and make sure we have all of these new node modules that we've just installed. So it looks like our account client and account applications are up and running. So we should now be able to go to malcorp.test slash account and see this going or running. I'll do a hard refresh. And there we go, we have our basic scaffolded app. I want to now modify our template or HTML inside of the view component for app.view. Let's go here to app.view. And remember, we had some CSS that came from view, the templating of the VDAP. We don't need this as we're using Tailwind. And I want to update this template to use some basic divs. And these divs will apply 
the Tailwind CSS. What we'll see after we save this is some very large 4XL text. We want font weight bold. Let me fix that typo. And we want the text centered. We'll also display the error code and such here. And lastly, let me create a little extra margin here so that between this title and the error codes, we get some gap. And also we get some gap between the top of the screen. So let's save this. And we should see that margin here and the error code. So it looks like everything's working so far. The next thing I wanna do is replace our call to our API or our account API with Axios instead of fetch. Back in app view, let's import Axios from Axios. And we'll set up a more clever config later on, don't worry. And in this on mounted, I'm gonna get rid of this code and replace it with Axios. Now Axios will handle the errors a little bit differently. As you can see, Axios, when we get a status 400 error, it's actually thrown as an error. Therefore, you must catch the error. We didn't have to do this with fetch. So if the error is a response error, and I think that is for status 400 responses, we're going to set the error code, and that's these responsive values and the error message from the response. If it's a different type of error, we'll just default to a 500. And we're not storing any body in the case of a successful result. And we can't get a successful result, result because we don't have any authorization yet. Let's save this. Our app is refreshing. There's some updates to dependencies. That's good. That means that now Vita's seeing that we're using Axios. You see it says new dependencies found. So there had to be a, an extra build step. And we also got a 401 here, which is great. That means that our account client reached out to our account API. And we see that everything is still working here. Next, let's get a basic routing configuration set up. Before we do that, I want to create a views folder to store some of our basic views. And it looks like I already created it somehow. I guess I had been playing around with the app, but there's no folders here. So make sure you create a views folder, or I should say there are no files in here yet. And let's create three files for our main views. And I'm calling views what others might call screens. These are just pages or view components that correspond to the routes. We're going to have a details route. And so we'll call this details view. We'll have an auth.view. And we'll have a fallback page called not found. Inside of auth, let's just put a basic template and a script with the name of auth here, and it will just say auth page. For the not found page, we'll do something almost exactly the same, except that we will call it not found. And for the details component, let's copy the code from the app and let's not cut it yet because we still want that there. And we'll paste this and then we'll call this components name details. So this page or component when we route to details, we'll do what our app main page was previously doing. And that is reach out to the me endpoint of the API. Now to handle routing between the details, auth and not found components, we're gonna create a file in the source called router.js. And we're gonna configure this newer version of view router. And so some of the imports might be a little different, but the main router config is basically the same. And by different, I mean different than view router version three. This is view router version four. So don't be confused. View router version four is the one that works with view version three. In here, we're going to import this create router function and this create web history function, which we'll see how they're used in a moment. And we want to import those components that we just created or those view components and view with a V-I-E-W-S. We create an array of routes. We'll have a path called authenticate, which goes to our auth component. The details component will be hosted under the slash or the root. and then. This is a little different in view three. We're going to create a catch all route that will display the not found. So if we don't match these two routes, we'll go to the not found component. Now you see that we have to put 
this route parameter with colon catch all and then inside parentheses is a regular expression. So basically this means that we can have a route parameter that can really be anything, any kind of text. And then after that, we can have any kind of text with star here. Before in previous view applications, you might've just put a star or a slash star. This is noted in the view next documentation, so check it out. To set up our router, which will end up being used in our app. We use the create router kind of factory or function, and we define how we want the history to be stored. And in this case, we're going to use not the hash history, but the web history. You would import, I think it's called create hash history if you wanted to do it that way. What is this though? The import.meta.env.base URL. This is actually something provided by Vite, and it gives us a way to import environment variables. If you remember from the last tutorial, we ended up setting up in config.js here. Let's pop that open. We set a base field to slash account slash. And this by default gets set as an environment variable called base URL. So this is just letting our web history know that we have a base URL of slash account. We also pass in our routes here and we use the ES6 shorthand and then we export this router. Of course, we need to use this router somewhere and we do that inside of main.js. And this may be a little different than you did in view three as well. We import the router from that routes file we just created. This is the export we just made. And to use these kind of plugins, you use dot use and router creates this plugin under the hood, so you don't need to worry about it too much. You can even see it says plugin. Why they call it a plugin underscore two type is beyond me. I guess I need more expertise in view. And we pass the router to this. And we should be able to save. And our application should have the router ready. But we need to use this router somewhere. We'll do that inside of app.view. Right now we have the code that we previously had, which has been moved into the details.view component. In this component now, I just want to define a few links or three links that will go to these three possible routes. And of course, this is a catch-all, so we can make a link to any route that isn't these two routes. And then I want to create a router view that will inject one of these three view components depending on the route that's matched. So I'll get rid of all this code and add the new code. What we'll have, and is an error evidently, but we'll check that out, is an app component. And so this will be displayed on all pages and all pages will also show these three router links. This is just placeholder for now and this will allow us to navigate to these various routes. You can see that this last link is to an undefined route. I just called it slash not a route. And then underneath these three links will inject the router view. And so whichever route is matched underneath this markup will be injected either the auth component details or not found. So evidently there was some problem importing the routes file. And the reason for that is because I called this router.js. Let's call this routes. And maybe it makes more sense to call it router. But I'll call it routes. And let's see if we can reload the application now with a save. So I went back into main.js and resaved. Looks like dependencies were updated. You can see now that Vite smartly found, hey, we're using view router now. So add it to the bundled modules and it looks like we got the 401 so i think if we go to the browser this should work all right you see we're at slash account so if i click and this is loading as it was before with the 401 and if i click auth we got auth page any old route not a route maybe if i type not a route blah 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 it should still be not a route excellent or not found and if i go back to home details we fetch that data again. And probably, you know, I want to set some sort of loading state for this one. We didn't see any problem because we're in local dev, but that would also be wise. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me. I'm still working out what I want to work on next. 
But whatever it is, whether it's the application logic, the data fetching, or just scaffolding out some view components, I think it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned and can't wait to see you again. Hasta pronto.